Hi everyone, I'm Riley from Echidna Sewing. Welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this children's apron. Aprons are a great staple to have in every kitchen, especially if a family member or a friend is a baker or a chef. This apron makes a great gift as you can add personalization to it with embroidery, such as initials, names, or general designs like kitchen instruments, flowers, or whatever you like. There is also a tutorial for the adult version of this project, so be sure to check that out too. We recommend using a plain cotton duck, canvas or denim for this tutorial. I'll be using a cotton canvas fabric, and if you wanted a print fabric, a printed cotton duck or printed linen would work fine. The machines I'm using in this video are the NV180, which does both embroidery and sewing, and the Juki MO114D. Now, if you don't have an overlocker, you can either use a zigzag or an overlocking stitch on your sewing machine. And here is everything else that I'm going to need for this project, but you can check out the full list down below to know more. Now, let's get into it. First, you'll need to iron your fabric to remove any wrinkles. You can see I've already done this. Then with your friction pen, you want to draw a rectangle that is 24 inches high and 14 inches wide. Then mark a point 12 inches up from the bottom on both sides of your rectangle. Then you want to find the midway point along the top edge. And then mark three and a half inches on either side of that. Now you want to connect each top mark along a diagonal edge to that 12 inch mark along the side. Now you can cut out your apron along those diagonal lines. Once you have cut out your apron piece, you can pop that aside and now you can cut out your pocket piece. The pocket piece for this apron will be an eight inch square. We will be embroidering in the middle of the pocket piece. So fold it in half and then in half again and finger press to find the center. Then mark this point with a cross using your friction pen. I will be embroidering this design today, which you can find for free on our website. We do also have a pack of designs available for purchase, which includes this design here. The hoop I am using is the 4x4 hoop, which will fit my pocket piece perfectly. However, if you are using a bigger hoop, you'll need to cut the pocket piece to suit your hoop size and then trim it down to the required dimensions afterwards. I will be hooping my pocket piece with a cutaway stabilizer to mitigate any fabric warping. So go ahead and hoop those pieces together. Then finger tighten the screw and you're ready to start embroidering. Once your design is done, you can remove it from the hoop, cut away excess stabilizer and iron it flat, which you can see I've done already. If you've used a bigger hoop size, make sure you trim down your pocket piece to an eight inch square. Now we're going to overlock each edge of your pocket piece and of your apron piece. Then place your apron piece aside for now. And with your embroidery in the correct orientation, flip it over so the wrong side is facing up. 
and fold over one edge of your pocket piece half an inch to form the top edge and press that with your iron. Now that I've ironed that edge, you're going to top stitch just along that overlocked edge. Once you've top stitched that edge, iron the other three edges, but don't top stitch them in place just yet. Once you've ironed those three edges, you want to find the center point of your apron piece. You can do this by folding it in half, and then in half again. Unfold it, and you're going to line up the middle point of the top edge with that center point you've just found. Like so, and pin it in place to secure it. Then you're going to want to top stitch the two sides and the bottom edge to the apron piece and try and stitch as close to this outer edge as possible. Flip your apron over so the wrong side is facing up and you're going to fold the bottom and the top edges over half an inch and press them flat with your iron. Now you can top stitch those in place along the overlocked edges. Now repeat that process of folding over the edges, ironing them and top stitching them for both the sides and the diagonals. Once you've finished your apron edges, you want to cut four pieces of your cotton webbing that are 25 inches long. These will form the neck and waist straps. You can adjust this if you need longer or shorter pieces. Also, if your cotton webbing is too thin, you can stitch two pieces together to make it thicker. Grab one of your pieces of webbing and fold over one raw edge about half an inch and you're going to pin it in place on the wrong side of your apron where the diagonal edge meets the side edge. The fold needs to sit underneath the webbing and make sure that the long end is sticking out of the apron. And you want to make sure that your webbing has about an inch sitting on the back. Pin that in place. Then you want to stitch the webbing to your apron with a box X stitch. Once you've stitched that one on, you want to repeat that for the other side of the waist and then your top pieces will need to be aligned in the corner where the diagonal meets the top edge.
fold over the remaining raw edge of your webbing twice and then pin or clip that to secure it. Then you want to top stitch as close to that folded edge as possible. Then repeat that for the remaining three pieces of webbing. And there is your finished apron. Now, if you're interested in any of the products that we use in this video, feel free to check out our website for more information. And don't forget to tag us on Instagram so we can see your aprons too. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing.